Welcome back. So now we want to, of course, also be able to actually um, go to the edit view and then show the user. So I want to go in here. Let's uh, let's go back to the person view. If I press edit Bob, not only do I want to show Bob, but I also want to show the selected item he has as the status right now. So in this case, it was in jail. So I wanted to also select the actual item that Bob has selected. So let's try and go in here just to show you. Now, the first thing I did was pretty much just copy paste from the create here. I just copied the entire form group and pasted it into the edit view. That's basic. Um, I kept the label as status and then in the select I kept everything as it was. The only difference is pretty much that you have to remember now the model was not, this is how it looked inside um, the create view. The model is not the actual list of status anymore. You have to do model and then statuses because now we actually have a view model available that contains the statuses, right? So that's the first thing you need to change. Now for each status I get, I just make an option just like I did before, but there's another but here because, let me just make two lines here to show you. Um, I have to add this line now right here, which actually goes in and specifies, let me just give you some more space so you can see what's going on here. Um, this line right here specifies that if if you end up actually adding adding an option where the model's person status ID is the same as the current status ID, then I want that to be the selected one. And you do that pretty much just by saying, here we have, I'm just, this add sign just means here's going to be some C-sharp code, and all the C-sharp code is doing is it's saying, if you figure out that the status ID of the current status is actually the same that the person already have selected, remember he already has a status, right? then you need to set a selected tag on the option. I'll show that in, a, in the browser in a second. And if not, then just don't put anything in here, right? So now that means that if we go to the browser and I try to look at the actual code here, Control shift i or right-click and inspect. And let's just jump into this code right here just to show you what it actually does. Now we have the select list right here. Let me try and zoom a bit to make it easier. Now, what that actually did was it said, is the Current status one, yes. Okay, is the user's current status one? No. Okay, then don't add the select attribute to this tag. The second place it says, oh, the status is two and the user status is also two, so add the selected attribute. And then what the select does is, is it says, okay, then that's the one we'll display right now. Okay, so now that works. Now we can actually show the selected state. Awesome. Zooming out again and all we need to do now is when we do the save user now, it has to now go in and figure out if we want if we change the state. So I'll do available, save user, go back, the state isn't changed. Why? Well, of course it's not because we didn't change the actual post edit request. So let's go to the action method here and uh, change that as the final thing and then we're pretty much done with this. So we have the HTTP post here with the person. Now, if we put in the breakpoint, you'll see that we actually do get the information back now. So let me just try and uh, open this guy, do the edit again, change it around. I'm in the edit here, now change this around to available, I'll do the save, I hit the breakpoint, I'll open this person right here, just to show you, if I expand him, you'll see status, you'll see the ID is now 3, and the name is null, because we don't have the real um, status, we just have the ID of the status, that was all I passed in, not the name. Okay, so we need to now change that for the person to edit, of course, and then change the current status and save it and then we're done. So let's uh, stop this for now and just do what we did in the create one. I'll just steal that code. So back to the create one here. Now this is how we find the actual status. Go back to my uh, edit view down here. So I'll say, what I actually do the post here, I'll go ahead and find the status for the actual edit view. So I'll say p.status.id and then I'll set that status on the person I want to edit here status equal to the status I just found and I'm done, right? That's all I had to do. I'll run the application again just to see it running and then I'm all done with the edit view as well. So now you can actually, not only can you now pass in using a model view, sorry, a view model, I keep turning those around, passing in using a view model, but you can also actually pass in information using the dot notation and then pull out that information again to actually change an actual object of another object instead of just um, a basic um, value, right? So you got two things in this lesson and um, that's all fine and, and, and dandy.
In the application back up and running, I'm pressing the edit view here. So I'll change the status again to available and I'll save the user. And if it doesn't explode, I get in here. I just, let me just step over here. Let me just jump down to where it actually found the person status, hopefully. I'll jump down and hopefully now the person status is something different. It's available. There we go. I'll do continue and now it should just show up with the person status available instead. So now we can actually start editing uh, the different statuses on our person using different objects. And that's Again, another small step, but we are starting to actually be able to do some real application stuff. And uh, next, what I'll start focusing on is splitting things into layers instead of this huge mess we're getting right now. See you in the next lessons.